here's the thing that took me years to learn, and I think this is probably one of your bigger takeaways tonight, is don't expect a huge epiphany. Don't expect the Holy Grail or some kind of magic bullet or whatever. What's going to make you a good trader is a million little things. And, and you know what kills me is a lot of these little things I, I forget to do sometimes, and I need to put reminders in place and commitment devices, as you'll see in one second, in place to make sure I'm doing them. But there's so many tiny, tiny things that you can do to become better and better and better as a trader and become more consistently profitable. So you really need to think big and act small. And I've written about this quite a bit on my website where I write about affirmations and I'll, I'll see if I can dig up the affirmations, random thoughts and put it in my newsletter. So think big, act small. And by that, I'm referring to a, a Kaizen type approach. The Kaizen way, Robert somebody, I think, I forget his name at, this, at, at the moment, but I saw him speak and he, he was really, really good. And it's a, it's a great book. If you go to davelinercom slash books dash two dash three, you could check out the book. It's a little short book, one sitter. We're really good. I have pages upon pages upon pages of all types of Kaizen things that I need to do. I, I have a digital notebook that I use for all that stuff. And I need to figure out a way to get them more and more organized. And I've been working on that pretty hard. But there's so many little things you can do. I'll give you an example. As I talked about, I think I said it, I say this example often. And I said it yesterday in the final bar with Dave Keller. I kept losing money every time I'd walk in my office. Now, I preach against day trading, but I'm here all day. And I think that maybe I could do a little intraday trading here and there, a little intraday trend following, use the same sort of concepts of momentum and pullbacks, et cetera intraday and sometimes it works well sometimes it doesn't like anything if i wait and wait and wait i print money but i i lose money in between not waiting okay but anyway long story endless what i discovered was for some strange reason through documentation i noticed that when i would get back to my office after leaving my office i tended to do a lot of frivolous trading and i tended to lose money almost on 100% of those trades. And I wasn't sure why, but I made a note of it. And then I began to put in a little bit of a delay between me and my trading when I walked back into my office. And somewhere around that time, I think it was, his name is Irely. I should have looked up the book, but he's got a couple of good books. He's one of my favorite behavioral scientists. I like uh, Malcolm Gladwell. I like Ireley. I like the aforementioned gentleman that did Kaizen Way. If somebody knows his name, let me know so I can give him credit. Um, those are good. Those are pretty good ones when it comes to the, the behavioral finance and psychology that I would highly recommend you read. But anyway, I believe it was in Ireley's book because he's an Israeli, so that makes the most sense where he talked about the hangry judge effect. It basically, you would get much harsher sentences if you were sentenced before lunch and much more lenient sentences after lunch. So if you've been, if you've been convicted, see if you could get Robert Marr. Thank you, thank you. So Robert Marr was the Kaizen way. He's got, a, he's got another book called Mastering Fear. It's even smaller. It's a good book too, and it does apply a lot to trading. So anyway, long story endless, after reading that early book, I realized that, well, wait a minute. I am hangry. I have a bit of a sugar problem. I've never been diagnosed, but I know I have it. I just have to manage it. First thing I do in the morning, I put a little protein powder in the car, a coffee, a little uh, coconut oil and some nuts, uh, some Brazil nuts to uh, just get, get something in me so I have a little sugar to run my brain. Your brain uses a lot of sugar. And I'm also learning, I know I'm getting sidetracked here, imagine that, but I'm also learning, I'm listening to a book by Quick, and I do plan on buying it and reading it. It's pretty good. My only, the name of that book is Limitless. My only gripe so far, it's a wonderful book, but he's. it's one of those books that they're always telling you what they're going to tell you instead of just tell you. Um, and, and that's one of my pet peeves when it comes to books. But other than that, it's a wonderful book. The audio is excellent. I'd highly recommend you get that one too. It's called Limitless by Quick. Again, long story endless. So I realized that the reason I was making these frivolous trades was I was hangry 
leaving the market or leaving my screens, okay? And when and nothing looked good, ah, this effing market, you know? And then I'd go eat breakfast or go eat lunch, whatever the case may be, and I come in and I'm like, oh yeah, it all looks beautiful because I was very happy afterwards and feeling good. Now, getting back to the Kaizen and things, and that's little one little thing. So whenever I walk into the office, the first thing I write into my trading journal, I write the time and I write W-I-T-O. That stands for walk in the office. So I just walked in the office. If I make a trade within five minutes, of that time, I've got to be really, really careful to make sure that what I'm seeing, I'm really seeing. It's it's a lot about getting to know yourself and like documentation, as I'll get to in one second, could really, not like documentation, documentation could really help you to unearth a lot of these things. But little simple things like set alerts, okay? So let's say you forget to put your orders in on a stock or whatever. Well, make sure you put an alert in that doesn't go away at your entry, so you'll get an alert and put it close, put it uh, below your entry, so you get an alert long before it triggers to remind you to get into that stock. And that's, again, it's one of those little things that I don't remember. I think it was, um, I want to say it was KNF, which is one of our, which is our biggest winner right now in the portfolio. I I put in orders every day to buy it, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day for a week or so. And I'm thinking like, this thing's never gonna trigger. And I didn't bother putting my order in one day. And luckily somebody in Facebook, my Facebook group pointed out that it just triggered or whatever. And it, it hadn't gone too far from the entry before I, I jumped in. So there you have it right there. One tiny little thing, the difference between a big gainer in my accounts, multiple accounts, and not just the model account and a zero, and a lot of mental anguish was, or could have been just putting that alert in. And in, in that case, I got lucky, I got off the hook. When I was at the retreat with Charlie Kirk years ago, down in St. Lucia, he had invited me to to be the guest of honor, which was, um, I know it sounds a little, <laughs> again, there's a narcissist, narcissistic saying that, but, it, but I'm flattered by doing it, uh, by being able to, to go there. And anyway, somebody pointed out that you get your little notebook and write shame on the front and write down the things you do that or that you shouldn't be doing when you do them. And as you start filling that notebook up, you'll realize you have become the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. So set alerts. Alerts are your best friend. Um, I set a timer five minutes before the open so I don't miss the open. I set a timer five minutes before the closing. I set a timer at a half an hour before the close, which, and here's, a, here's another little thing I forget to do. Some days I forget to set that timer. I get really busy, I'm gonna be on the final bar, or I got a deadline, or I'm so busy uh, watching the screen, probably when I shouldn't watch the screen, I forget to do my IPO analysis. It's almost like I'm thinking, I need to put out a service every day to where I have to stop an hour before the market closes and do that service just so it would force me to do the homework. So that would be quite the commitment device. I'm not ready to go that far, but I am ready to, especially after doing this presentation, to make sure I set that alarm for every day at 2.30. And, and you know, just kind of as a side note, imagine that, me go off on a tangent. As a side note, and this is probably one of the things I'll flesh out in further presentations, but when you're new to trading, you think that somebody who's well seasoned has it all figured out and, and they don't, okay? And they have a pretty good idea what they're doing, but they still make a lot of stupid mistakes like I'm admitting to you right now, okay? It happens, spell with a silent SH. I've already demonetized, so I guess shit happens. <laughs> but anyway, you need to set, set timers for the opening and closing or whatever some sort of analysis needs to be done. Now, Truth be told, we had a big, I, I occasionally play uh, trade a pattern called Russian Dolls. And that's where you have a setup that's set up as a pullback, especially if it's a good looking setup. And if the stock begins to take off intraday, I might go in with a small position share size and take a trade. And we had one a couple of days ago, somebody pointed out on Facebook, in my Facebook group, Dave Landry's Trend Traders. You have to be a, at least a gold member of Dave Landry to participate. But somebody pointed out that stock was up four points. I was like, oh, damn. So I was thinking, especially right before it went live, like, 
I could have bought maybe a thousand shares at least of this stock. And that would have been a $3,000 day, at least. If I'd have just done that at one account, it'd be $3,000. So that's a, that was a little hard to stomach. And all I would have had to do for that would be A, set an alarm. Okay, that'd be the best thing to do. That's free. Or at least put it in a watch list on my quote screen where I take a look at what's the hot stocks and what's not. And I have those sorted by relative strength. So when I remember, I punch in my Landry list. So that's where you need to make little things. Again, a million little things make them a habit. And I would encourage you to brainstorm some little things that you could do. So one of my little things I need to do is maybe every night before I go home or every morning as soon as I get here, take those stocks out of my Landry list and put them in a small Landry list over on my quote screen and then keep an eye on them and then possibly go through them live and, and put some alerts in and that in and of itself keep a lot of trouble um you know today for instance the market's just kind of chopping around and um i i did too much trading admittedly but one thing that i did and, and do to keep me out of trouble in a case like this and again i'm just kind of spitballing here but i'll put like a alert on the bottom of the range and the top of the range. And as long as the market's stuck in a range, I'm gonna sit on my hands or at least try to sit on my hands. So let the alerts watch the screen for you. Let the alerts, uh, let your, your orders enter for you, okay? Like I was telling this gentleman earlier with this crypto stock, it's like, okay, well, put in a limit order at something wild and crazy. So if it does shoot up 100% more overnight, you take it off a couple hundred more dollars, okay? You're getting that free money. And then maybe put in a hard stop. And then that way the market makes the decisions for you. Let's say you're looking at a stock and, and of course you do use a little discretion, but you're looking at a stock and let's say the entry is, I don't know, 12, right? And the stock opens at 11.50. Well, it bounces around a little bit and doesn't seem to be doing anything. Put in your hard order, a stop entry order, okay? At the entry price of 12 and then go about your life, okay? So, there's a million little things you could do. And I'd be interested to hear in the comments below. Let me know. Let me do some of the little things that you're doing. Maybe I can learn from you. Like I said, I don't I don't have it all figured out, but I'm working on it. Now, you need to create minor commitment devices and then make those a habit. Now, the, the commitment device story I've told a thousand times and I'll probably tell a thousand more. A friend of mine, a trader friend of mine, was getting a little pudgy like a lot of us traders do from sitting around all day and he wanted to start working out so he found a kid that was really into working out and he i don't know if he paid the kids gym membership but i seem to think that he did he said look i'm gonna pay your membership to your gym and all i want in return is i want to ride to the gym every day and here's the clincher if you pass my house and it's 701 and i'm not sitting on that front porch waiting for you I will give you $20 cash for every day I'm not sitting on that porch. So this guy, I'm sure he's probably getting there at 6.55 and waiting to see if he comes out at seven and then he takes off at 7.01 with his 20 bucks. So that's a commitment device, but they don't have to be such crazy ones like that. Again, it could be like a five minute delay after walking in the office or even a two minute delay. And it could be something as simple as, okay, I like this stock and it's going up and I don't want to miss out, but let me put a stop entry order just a little bit higher than the market. And yeah, every now and then you'll get the high tick, but you're going to be shocked at how many times that market will stall just short of your order and implode. And it makes you realize that maybe you were getting a little too caught up in the flickering ticks. You're getting drawn to the screen like a moth where everything just looks fantastic or that one particular stock is creating this extreme FOMO. And by the way, like I said a minute ago, maybe if I wait a minute or two or five minutes, whatever, after walking the office, right? Your amygdala down deep in your brain, the flight or fight little part of your brain that controls the rest of what's sloshing around up there, I can't control it. It takes about three seconds to get from there to the rest of your brain, a little neurology at work. So if you do find yourself getting ready to jump into the market, Take a deep breath, or as I've said before, and I dug this out for a presentation the other day, I think it came out of a Cessna or something, twine the clock. And that comes from Greg Morse. And he talked about back when he was in the fighter pilot 
simulators, they try to they try to screw you up to where you're flipping the wrong levers or whatever or pushing the wrong buttons and crash the simulator. And after a few crashes of the simulator, he realized he's gonna have to slow down a little bit. And so what he would do in a in a situation when everything's beeping and going crazy and lights are flashing, he would wind the clock, reach over to the dash, wind the clock, and that would give him that few seconds to to take a more whole brain approach to fixing the problem or dealing with the problem, so to speak. And even when he was uh, later in life flying uh, jumbo jets, whenever they would have an issue, he would he would take steps. He would actually touch the dash or whatever you call it, uh, because the clocks are digital now, obviously. But he would touch the dash, and that would give him a couple of seconds to think through the problem, and not do something rash like shut down the wrong engine if an engine's on fire or whatever. Then you end up with no engines and, and the plane goes down. Anyway, you'll have to come up with your own commitment devices, but I'll be happy to share any of the ones I can think of. And if you leave me comments and let me know what you're doing, I'll, I'd will i love to learn from you and share that with everybody else. Now, one of the little secrets, it's just another little thing, is you want to document, 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 document your trades, but also document your emotions and then also get to know yourself and I can't beat the dead horse enough on this. And I talked about it in yesterday's final bar. And I'd be willing to bet if you go in and watch every final bar, except the ones where I'm just talking about charts, I probably brought it up again because I know Dave Keller does the same thing. Wake up and write three handwritten pages. It could be anything. I'm tired. I stayed up too late. I watched a stupid movie. You know, just get all that crap out your head. And by listening to this book by Quick Limitless, I'm realizing how freaking important that is to kind of warm your brain up a little bit and not go into the straight distraction on everything. And I have to say, I'm only about a third of the way through this thing, but a lot of the bad behaviors, which creates a lot of uh, uh, brain issues, so to speak, I don't want to say mental issues as a negative connotation, but like depleting your glucose and your prefrontal cortex and all that, that's from, for multitasking and switching too much, something I'm really guilty of doing. And it's like, aha, that's why I'm so burnt out on some days at the end of the day. So little epiphanies like that will come to you over time. Definitely document everything so you can figure out what's going on and definitely do those morning pages. It's probably one of the hardest things you've ever done, but it gets easier and easier. And like I told Dave Keller yesterday in Final Bar, I actually look forward to waking up and writing. That's sort of what gets me out of bed. I'm like, oh, I got to deal with this. I got to deal with that. It's like, well, let me just get up and write for a little while and see how, see how I feel. Anyway, a couple of random thoughts. Like I said a minute ago, I think each one of these topics can be turned into chapters in and of uh, themselves. So I'm just kind of scratching the surface here. I would I would encourage you to take this information and then expand upon it. And then, of course, pay attention to future presentations as, as I'll flesh them out more and more as I go off on tangents. <laughs> Somebody once told me, I think it was a compliment, he says, uh, he says, you know, you try to tell me something, it, it doesn't always click. But when you go off those tangents, I, I get a lot out of that. I get a lot more out of that than what you're actually trying to tell me. Anyway, so embrace and accept these concepts, and, and that's going to help you out tremendously. And then seek to obviously learn more and more about each one. So read the book on Kaizen, listen to or read the book Limitless, and uh, any other books that I mentioned earlier. And that's going to help kind of get to know yourself and get to know how your brain works, et cetera. And of course, document everything so you can learn more and more about yourself. And this, I think this is huge that it's just a bunch of little tiny things. And it's not just big one epiphany. It's not like somebody has a secret. Like I said before, nobody knows exactly what a market will do. But you, not me, and not the guy who screams on TV. So I think that's a huge thing that it's, it's just a bunch of little things. And I think anyone could do it. Now, here's a caveat I thought, I literally put this in last minute. You're gonna have to want it. One time I had a, and I've told the story a thousand times, one of my clients was struggling, but he would every now and then just print money and he knew how to trade, but he would do a lot of stupid stuff. And I said, look, just follow my service mechanically and hold yourself accountable to your wife. Tell her, hey, look, this guy's this guy sucks for a while, but then he prints money and then he sucks again. It's, it's That's just what, Trend trading is all about, okay? You're on fire, but then you're not. And then you're on fire again. Was it uh, Brian Gelber? Three months out of year, you're hot. You're so hot, you can't sleep at night because you're so damn hot. Three months out of year, you're you're cold. You just can't hit the side of the barn from inside the barn. 
And then the rest of the six months of the year, you grind it out, make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, and you wonder if you're ever going to get any serious traction. Well, that's the life of a trader. So kind of explain that process to her, and you know, I went on and on. And uh, he finally interrupted me and he said, he said, you know, he says, no, 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 that would end the marriage. And that was him admitting that he was not going to follow that plan, let alone hold himself accountable and have somebody else hold him accountable. So you want to learn how to trade? Have somebody hold you accountable. OK, I have a, a friend of mine that I've met in more recent years, and he's he's not a, a trader per se, but he's picked up traders. Uh, trading by working with a lot of traders over the years, kind of a behind the scenes kind of guy. And he's done exactly just that. He's like, okay, he told his wife, this is how much money we're putting aside for trading. This is how much I'm going to risk on each trade. And if we, if I blow through this um, amount of money, and it wasn't a huge amount of money, if I blow through this amount of money, I'm done. It's like, wow, that's huge to to go in with with all that, with all those parameters in there and to hold yourself that accountable. Anyway, so be willing to go against the conventional wisdom. I guess that's one that we'll eventually get to. Uh, toss logic out the window on a lot of times and just accept what is, is. Learn how to sit on your hands. And the hard thing, like I just said, is holding yourself accountable. And that's the beauty of this business is you could do whatever you want, right? And that's the downside of this business. You could do whatever you want. You have to hold yourself accountable. Now, the other thing, as I preach, is you have to get the, the reps in, and that's why I've been so hot on crypto lately, is that it's a great way to get the reps in, so to speak, the trades in, without risking a shit ton of money and risking your life savings. I know, crypto sounds crazy, it sounds speculative, they're all probably go to zero, but if you take a trader's perspective, you should, you should do just fine.